And today's question is, can being vegan help your running? Or specifically, how did it SEO? Does being vegan make you a better runner? And to that, I give you 278 5K or longer age group awards since 2006, just on plants. And I always do that because somebody came up to me at a race in 2011 when my first book, Eat Vegan on $4 a Day, came out. And I was wearing that shirt with that book title on it, trying to get the word out that vegan doesn't have to be elitist or expensive because I've been doing this for the better part of 42 years and my knees are fine. I have zero arthritis. So at 70. So <laughs> this person saw my shirt and said, oh, you can't run on a vegan diet. You certainly can't race on a vegan diet. And in that moment, it set my head ablaze. And I thought, I got to set the record straight here. And I'm just going to keep racing and placing and see what happens. And here we are, 2023, and I'm still at it. And there have, there have been so many people who have given me blowback and pushback and nasty comments on social media. Um, when Butter was on the cover of Time Magazine a few years ago, some of the local runners who just me so much we're all over my social media just going but butter and of course we know that whole story was flawed and the study that it was based on was flawed and we know that animal protein uh, animal cholesterol which is what animal fat is is cholesterol our bodies make enough of its own cholesterol we don't need to be adding any other animals to these arteries any other animals cholesterol to these arteries because that's going to slow us down a vegan diet is very anti-inflammatory, very alkaline. That means it doesn't lodge in your joints like animal protein does and create inflammation. You can Google that long bad baby explanation and it will tell you just what eating animals will do to your joints. My father, may he rest in peace, had crippling arthritis in his fingers and his toes looked just the same, his knees and his shoulders and his neck. He could, he had to stop driving because he could, I remember we were in the, used to be um, in my age group, well, they're still in my age group. They're just not running anymore. They used to beat me like crazy 10, 20, 30 years ago. And now because of arthritis and joint replacements, they are no longer running. So, um, you know, one of them who was the president of our local runners club said, Ellen, I'm just going to be happy to be walking around Europe with my wife in a few months. So those are the kinds of things you don't have to go through if you go vegan. And people say, oh, vegan diet is so restrictive, so challenging, so time consuming. Let me tell you, heart disease, diabetes, and cancer, those are real time wasters. Not that they all, um, can't be, uh, that, that they can be prevented. But, you know, our family, uh, as I've mentioned in other videos, we had so much breast cancer, mom, aunt, both sisters. I'm the only adult female without. Did I get all the good genes? Absolutely not. Only 10% of all breast cancers are considered to be genetic. And in our family, they figure 50%. So two out of the four cases were. The other two, my sister and my mom got it, got it late in life. So that means it was environmentally triggered, most likely. So there is much you can do to turn genes on and off. And I'm telling you, I just know from my running around in doctor's office with physical therapists, 70 for most people doesn't look like this. I had my physical not too long ago. And, you know, my, my GP who's seen me for years and just kind of thinks, uh, just doesn't know what to think about me. He's looking at my medical result, you know, my blood work, because I have that done every year for, um, for my physical. And he goes, like, remind me again, what are you on? And as I always go, I'm on plants. <laughs> yeah, and no cholesterol reducing medication. You mean you can get 140 cholesterol without being on Lipitor? Yes, you can. So uh, fortunately, there are some very good vegan plant-based cardiologists because they really get it. I actually have a very high cardiac calcium score from eating all those high protein diets in my teen years, my college years because it was a great way, fast way to lose uh, weight, but at the expense of our heart and our kidneys. And as a result, I've got a lot of old calcium floating around in my arteries. And yet the doctors say, your heart's done its own bypass, apparently. I mean, that's the phrase they use. So vegans, yes. Are we better runners? Yes, because we don't have the same kinds of aches and pains. We are also, let's talk about the ethical part of this. When we're out in nature, I always say you can't be an environmentalist unless you're out in nature 
observing what animals and plants need from humans, which is generally benign neglect. I always say, if in my backyard, if it doesn't grow on its own here in Florida with benign neglect, uh, I'm not adding pesticides and herbicides. And so it just isn't going to grow. So that's what we call a native plant. And we want those native plants here, although there's plenty that aren't. And that's just a whole nother video. But yeah, you got to be uh, observant of nature to figure out what we should be doing as an environmentalist. And when people go vegan, they realize because, you know, our little smartphones just record everything now, you know, what goes on in factory farms or just what happens to an animal when it's killed. We can see all those videos and most people can't unsee those images when it happens. So that is just one reason we really want to um, be compassionate and understanding and connecting those dots between the environment and global warming. You know, we're finding all kinds of situations now where uh, a heated up planet is really creating some bizarre weather patterns and events that going forward, we're just going to see more of. So being vegan makes you kind of more in touch with those things, makes you compassionate just by definition. And, uh, you know, most of us who have been kind of screaming this from the rooftops, re recognize the connections between the environment and how factory farming is destroying our planet. Oh, let's talk about my favorite seaweed, sorgasm or sorgasm. I'm not sure what the right pronunciation is. Either way, it's kind of interesting. But the main thing is it is messing up the Atlantic Ocean on uh, the Florida, on, in, in Florida on the Atlantic side, and then on the uh, the, the Gulf side where I am, it's not here yet, but you can see all this in the satellite pictures now. And it's just scary stuff. I mean, it kind of has always been here, but not as large and massive. And as Sea Shepherd, the amazing organization that has been trying to make us aware of what's going on in the oceans, even though we can't necessarily see what's happening all the time, when the oceans go, we go. And that's, that's the connection. We need the oxygen that's being uh, off-gassed for lack of a better phrase, in the, the oceans. And so these plants are competing for the oxygen that the fish need, and it's just all so interconnected. And that's why vegans, you know, our heads are ready to explode because we really feel like if we understand these issues that the world should have been vegan yesterday if we are going to stop this train wreck that we seem to be on when it comes to the environment. So if you have any other questions, please drop them down below. We'll get to them all uh, one way or another, or at least we'll try to. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll like and subscribe and be sure to smash that notification button for the next one once I get it up and running and uh, always competing in races. And yes, being vegan just makes you generally feel great, energized. And also there's research that shows we're generally in better moods as well, although... It is definitely a challenging when you know what you know. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Gotta run.